Thalia, is that you? Thalia, when I returned home for the first time in four months, I found my daughter in the bathroom with no lights on. I had returned to my parents' home in the countryside for a while to help them. My daughter's long hair, which she had been so proud of, was scattered on the bathroom floor, and her clothes were stuck to her slender, soaking wet body. I entered the small bathroom and shook my limp daughter by the shoulders. Thalia, are you okay? What the hell happened? My daughter slowly looked at me as if she had come to her senses. Mom, mom. Sounding relieved, my daughter started crying out loud. I saw nearby that her hair was not only cut with scissors, but also shaved with clippers. I was devastated as I hugged her, especially since my daughter was planning to get married soon. Eventually, my daughter calmed down and started talking little by little. Amara and her father beat me. Although I was vaguely aware of this, it was still a shock to learn that my husband was complicit. I think he had a plan. He wanted to ruin my marriage. He told me he'd be away from home for five days and that I should break off the engagement before then. Unforgivable. Holding myself from going crazy, I called my husband to find out the truth. Hello? Oh, what's wrong? We're at the airport right now. We're going around Hokkaido on a five-day, four-night trip. We're going to eat lots of delicious food. After doing that to my daughter, my husband said everything so calmly as if nothing had happened. Fine, he can play these games if he wants to. At first I had called to yell at him, but my husband's behavior stopped me from doing so. Did something happen? It's almost time for my flight. So if you have anything to do, please put it in your email. Oh yeah, I want to enjoy my family trip, so don't contact me during the trip. Then I'll go with that. The phone hung up. My love for my husband, my trust in him, and the bond we've had together. At that moment, I felt like everything came crashing down. Thalia, I know that this house is a memory of your father and our family, but I think it's time we let go of this. My daughter gave a small nod to my murmur. I will never forgive those who hurt my daughter. I immediately started making preparations to put them through hell, and my daughter and I left the house. I'm Patricia, 51 years old. We are a family of four, including my husband and two daughters. The older daughter, Amara, is 33 years old, married six years ago, and lives out of town. My younger daughter, Thalia, also seems to have found someone she wants to marry at the age of 25. From what people hear, it sounds like a normal family. But ours is a step family where both my husband and I remarried, each of us having children. And now we are facing problems that ordinary families don't have. I lost my ex-husband in a traffic accident when I was 28 years old. At that time, it happened so suddenly that my vision went completely dark, and I couldn't do anything but cry. On the night of the wake, my girlfriend's mother spoke harshly to me as I fell asleep from shock. Patricia, stay strong, you're a mother. My mother's words brought me back to my senses. I was so wrapped up in the grief of losing my husband that I could no longer think about my daughter. We'll support you. You need to take good care of Thalia. This is something only you, as a mother, can do. Tears overflowed from my eyes. My heart broke as I thought of my husband who had left behind our two-year-old Thalia. However, a different power than before was growing inside me. From now on, I will protect Thalia by myself. That thought seemed to make me stronger. Why don't you come back to your parents' house once you've calmed down? I was happy about my worried mother's suggestion, but I had no intention of going back. Thank you, but this house was left to me by that person. The house the three of us had lived in was our own home that my husband and I had purchased shortly after getting married. After my husband passed away, I was unable to leave because the loan for the house would be paid off through insurance. It's okay, I'm sure things will work out. My mother respected my choice, and for about six months, she came from her home in the countryside to support me. I am thankful to my mother for helping me to get back on my feet sooner than expected. I met my current husband, Orson, at my first part-time job after becoming a single mother. It was a small company with about 15 people, so the employees were close to each other, and it had a homely atmosphere among them. I immediately hit it off with Orson, who was single and raising a daughter, and we became friends. She was a stylish and cute person with shaggy curly hair and round black spots. My daughter is in fifth grade, and maybe because I'm a man, I just can't help her understand how girls feel. His daughter, Amara, shown in her photo, was a cute girl with curly hair just like her father. Sometimes I don't know what to do when my daughter cries and asks, where's my daddy? I guess she's jealous of all the fathers participating in events at the kindergarten. I think just having someone to listen to my troubles and worries made us both feel a little better. 
As an extension of our consultation, we gradually started seeing each other more and more outside of work, such as accompanying his daughter's shopping and driving her to an aquarium that Thalia wanted to go to. As we worked together to raise our children, we started dating. Will you marry me? We'd been together for a year, but I wanted to support you. I promise to love you with all the memories you have of your ex-husband. Thalia was also attached to him, and his daughter Amara got along well too, so I had no reason to say no. At some point, I also wanted to protect our daughters with my husband and wish them to be happy. After we finished greeting each other's parents, we immediately registered our citizenship and started life as a family of four. My husband and I talked about housing and we decided to continue living in the same house I was living in, but I felt a little guilty about starting my life with my new family in the same house I had lived in with my ex-husband. I will make Patricia and Thalia happy. As if sensing my feelings, my husband clasped his hands together and declared, facing the small Buddhist altar of my late husband. Seeing that, I felt like I had finally come to terms with my feelings. When we started living together, Thalia was happy to have a big sister and started following Amara around all the time. Amara, let's play together. With an age difference of eight years, it would be impossible for them to play together. For junior high school, Amara, it's just like taking care of a baby, Thalia. Don't be so selfish. I'm sorry, Amara. However, while Thalia was persistently clinging to her, Amara didn't mind and smiled at Thalia. The sight of the two of them made me smile and I thought from the bottom of my heart, I'm so glad we got married. One day, Mom, what is a cabbage patch? One night while watching TV with my husband, Thalia suddenly asked me this question. Amara says I look like a cabbage patch. Her husband and I looked at each other and burst into laughter. Thalia's hair and a bob cut indeed looked like a cabbage patch. I tried to comfort her by saying, I mean, it's cute, but she was laughed at and Thalia started to dislike having a bob cut. It became standard to tie her long hair with an elastic band, and before she knew it, her hair had grown to about her chest. However, this would cause big problems later on. Amara's sister has beautiful hair. It all started with the words of Amara's friend who was visiting our house. Frances' fair skin and glossy straight hair were inherited from her father, but her long hair caught the eye. Amara's hair is shaggy, though. The innocent words from her friend brutally hurt Amara. As she entered her adolescence, at her school the boys in her class seemed to make fun of her curly hair, and Amara gradually began to feel insecure about it. Her hair and started to distance herself from Thalia, who had straight hair. A year had passed since the four of us started living together. When I returned home from shopping and opened the front door, I heard Fran's loud cries. I hurried to the living room where Amara ran upstairs, and Thalia hugged me. Mom, Amara, Amara did this, oh God, what happened to you? Thalia ran up to me, her hair cut short on one side, and a strand of hair on the top of her head was bald as if it had been cut off from the roots. Although young, Thalia is a girl. There's no way she wouldn't be shocked to have her hair cut. Amara, come out! What does this mean? Explain! Lost in anger, I banged on Amara's door as hard as I could. Why are you doing this? If you're a middle school student, you'll know what's okay and what's wrong. I'd probably be just as angry if Amara were my biological child. When my husband returned and saw Frances' head, he became furious and dragged Amara out of her room and slapped her. Without even listening to Amara, he forced her to apologize. It was probably too much. However, Frances' hair was in terrible condition. After we calmed down and heard Amara's reasons, we were depressed again. We tried to take care of Amara as much as possible, apologize for getting angry, and talk to the school. But it was too late. Amara began to stay in her room except for meals and did not want Thalia to come near her, and we no longer went out together. I had many discussions with her, but Amara's closed heart never opened up again. I should have taken Amara's side. I've had a lot of bad experiences with quirky hair too. My husband was deeply hurt and regretted hitting Amara. I'm going to go to high school from grandpa's house. Amara moved to her in-law's house upon entering high school, and from there she began attending school. As we lived apart, Amara regained her composure, and our relationship gradually improved, but she did not return to our home until she graduated from college. Around the time Amara got married and moved out of state and Thalia started looking for a job, my father-in-law passed away due to illness, and I ended up living with my mother-in-law. The house was old and in need of renovation soon, so we decided to leave it as is for now and have them come here. A lot has happened with Amara over the past 10 years, but I thought I had gotten along fairly well with her mother-in-law. However, by living together, 
I realized that this was a misunderstanding. Within a month of living together, my mother-in-law started to harass me and Francis. She doesn't do anything and nags at me. Maybe it was because of the dissatisfaction and feelings that she had stored up for many years towards me. At first, I was stressed out about my mother-in-law, but gradually I started to feel less stressed. This is just my personality, but rather than feeling stressed out about being forced to do something, I tend to change my mind and say, I'll do it myself. It's okay for me too. I know that it will be easier for mom if I help. No matter what grandma says, I've already decided to take the initiative. It'll work out somehow as my motto, and Thalia seems to have inherited that as well. She seems to be looking at me for some reason, and I can't help but laugh. Her mother-in-law, perhaps not amused by the fact that Thalia and I didn't care, turned her attention to her husband. It wasn't a front. It was a kind of brainwashing. One day, three years later, Amara, who had been married and living outside the prefecture, suddenly returned. The divorce was due to her partner cheating. I received a large sum of alimony, so I'm done with it. However, I feel lonely suddenly being alone. Is it okay for me to come back to my house? I'm sure it's great. This is your parents' house and always your home. Amara's divorce was a shock, but my husband looked a little happy that she had come back. When Amara joined the family and our family of five began living together, things in the house gradually became strange. My mother-in-law and Amara got together and started treating Francis and me like we were housekeepers. My husband was sweet to Amara and the house seemed to be divided. Amara is hurt by the divorce. Please listen to my selfishness. I'm going to be Amara's number one ally this time. I knew how my husband felt, and although I knew that I didn't want things to go on like this, I didn't know what to do about the situation. After a while, I received a phone call from my parents' house. My father collapsed and was hospitalized for two months. The tired voice of my mother made me want to rush over to her, but the thought of my mother-in-law and Amara, who were doing nothing, made me worry about Thalia. You don't have to worry about us, just go. That's right. If you don't go and something happens, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Thalia's words encouraged me to return to my parents' home, which was just a plane flight away. I had originally planned to return home for two months, but when my father was discharged from the hospital, my mother's condition deteriorated, so I decided to extend their stay. During that time, I communicated with my husband via email and spoke to Francis often on the phone. As expected, it seems like Thalia is now left in charge of housework. I tried complaining to my husband over the phone, but to no avail. Thalia says she'll do it herself. She's not being forced. I can feel a sense of suspicion towards my husband spreading in my chest. Everything may be reaching its limit soon. Even as I thought so, I was worried about not being able to return home right away. Just as my parents were feeling better, Thalia gave me some good news. Mom, there's someone I want to marry. I'd like to introduce him to you. Do you think you'll be back next month? I grabbed my phone and jumped for joy. Of course, I'll be home right away for Thalia. Let me know when the date is decided. I'll be home by then. When I told my parents, they both seemed to feel better all at once. However, the day when her fiancé was visiting was approaching, and as I was preparing to leave my parents' house, I received a phone call from my husband. It looks like Fran's fiancé's arrival has been postponed until next week. Huh? I haven't heard anything. Oh, it seems like you're busy right now. Thalia asked me to keep this message for you, so please refrain from contacting her for a while. All right, I understand. I, I was disappointed that it had been postponed, although I thought I had no choice. Also, since I've had a bit of a long break, we're thinking of going on a trip starting Saturday. Why don't you stay over there and relax for a little more? Yeah, then I'll do that, but I'm thinking of going home soon, so please let me know as soon as you know the schedule. Yeah, but there's no need to rush. We won't be there when you come back next week, and Thalia will be busy too. You should take your time, you don't have to push yourself too hard. Yes, thank you. I felt a sense of discomfort as my husband seemed to not want me to come home. It bothered me that the trip was the day before her fiancé was scheduled to arrive, and it didn't make sense that Thalia was so busy that she asked my husband to contact me. I was feeling anxious and decided to go home. On the day my husband and I left for the trip Saturday afternoon when I arrived at my home for the first time in four months, the house was completely silent, probably because I had already left. The only thing I could hear was a strange hissing sound coming from somewhere. I'm back! I tried calling out from the front door, but no one answered. I left my carrying case at the entrance and quietly walked into the house. There were no lights on in the living room or kitchen, 
and I knocked on my mother-in-law's room, but I didn't hear a single sound. I had a bad feeling. I realized what the sound was and hurried towards it. That was probably the sound of the shower in the bathroom. When I dared to open the door to the bathroom with no lights on, I saw a person sitting flat on the floor, leaning against the wall. What? I can't help but let out a scream. When I gingerly turned on the light, there was a Thalia that was way different than when I had last seen her. Her long hair, which she was proud of, was scattered on the bathroom floor and her clothes were stuck to her slim, drenched body. H! Thalia! Thalia! Inside the bathtub, a cleaning brush and a shower head with running water were left, making a hissing sound. I turned off the faucet and went into the small bathroom to shake Thalia's shoulder. Thalia, are you okay? What the hell happened? Thalia came to her senses and slowly looked at me. Mom! Mom! Thalia seemed relieved and started crying out loud. Thalia's hair, seen nearby, was not only cut with scissors but also shaved with clippers. Only some parts of her long hair remained, such as around her nape. I was so devastated that I hugged Thalia. As I hugged her trembling body, I remembered the past. It's Amara again, but Thalia is no longer a small child. It's hard to believe that she couldn't resist and had her hair cut, but the reality is that she was able to do it. Imaginations that I don't want to think about are taking over my mind. I was so frustrated and sad that I cried with Thalia as I hugged her. Even though her marriage to the person she loves has already been decided, I couldn't help but feel a pain in my chest. Eventually, Thalia calmed down and started talking little by little. Amara and my dad did this. Although I had a vague understanding of my husband, I was still shocked. Thalia was cleaning the bathroom when my husband suddenly grabbed her from behind, and Amara cut her hair. Even though she tried to resist, she was unable to move in the small bathroom, and my husband held her down in his arms as Amara shaved her head. I think he was planning it. He took my phone away a while ago. I think he wanted to destroy my marriage. After cutting Thalia's hair, the three of them left with the travel bags they had prepared. I'll be away from home for five days, so break off the engagement by then. Unforgivable. Holding myself from going crazy, I called my husband to find out the truth. Hello? Oh, what's wrong? We're at the airport right now. We're going around Hokkaido on a five-day, four-night trip. We're going to eat lots of delicious food. After doing that to my daughter, my husband said everything so calmly as if nothing had happened. Fine. He can play these games if he wants to. At first, I had called to yell at him, but my husband's behavior stopped me from doing so. Did something happen? It's almost time for my flight, so if you have anything to do, please put it in my email. Oh yeah, I want to enjoy our family trip to the fullest, so please don't contact us during the trip. I'll be going then. With that, the phone hung up. At that moment, I felt like all my love, trust, and bond with my husband had been destroyed. Thalia, I know that this house is a memory of your father and our family, but I think it's time we let go of this. Thalia nodded slightly at my murmur. Then just as she remembered, she stood up, took my hand, and walked over to a small Buddhist altar in the living room. The door to the Buddhist altar was closed, and the photo frames of my late husband had been put away. Is this what my husband thinks? The hesitation completely disappeared from me. I opened the door to the Buddhist altar and placed my hand on the portrait of Thalia's father placed inside. Then, as I hugged Thalia next to me, I once again swore to my ex-husband, I must never forgive those who hurt Thalia. Five days later, Thalia received a frantic phone call from my husband. When he realized Thalia wouldn't answer, no matter how many times he tried, my cell phone finally rang. Hey, hey, what's going on? I can't get into the house, I can't contact Thalia, and the locks seem to have changed, and there's a sign out front saying this house is for sale. When my husband answered the phone, he sounded panicked, probably because something impossible was happening. Oh, I sold it. Shouldn't you guys go back to your parents' house? Your mother-in-law has the key, right? Huh? We haven't used that place for three years, right? The bed is moldy and unusable. Maybe I've arranged for your luggage to be delivered to your parents' house tomorrow, so why don't you just stay at a hotel tonight? Seeing my calm demeanor, my husband murmured anxiously, Wait a minute, you just sold the house? Why? After taking a breath, I answered my husband's question. Why? Why don't you think on your own? Why did I come to do this? You don't remember anything. Oh, no. My husband must have thought that I was still at home and didn't know about Thalia. No, I can explain. Wow, you can leave Thalia in such a state and go on a family trip. There must be a great reason. Please, Patricia, listen to me. 
No matter what the circumstances were, there was no way he could be forgiven for doing something like that to his daughter. I will never forgive you for hurting Thalia. I'll hear your excuses tomorrow. I'm coming for your head, so be waiting at your parents' house. With that, I hung up. The next day, Thalia and I visited our in-laws. It seemed like the package had arrived and there was a pile of cardboard boxes in the Japanese-style room next to the entrance. Thalia took off her wig and knit hat at the door and glared at my husband. Seeing again the terrible condition of Thalia's head, my husband lowered his gaze, unable to look her in the eyes. Oh, um, Thalia, I'm so sorry. He tried to apologize in a quiet voice, but neither Thalia nor I had any intention of settling for anything like that. When we got home, the five of us sat facing a table in the Japanese-style room. Wow, what a terrible head. Amara pointed at Thalia's head and hugged her stomach, laughing. If that's the case, you can't have a wedding. You won't be able to see your fiancé in that state, right? Has the engagement been broken already? Amara continued to laugh, and I couldn't help but... I couldn't help but raise my voice. Why did you do this? Were you jealous of Thalia's hair? That was your reason, right? When I said that, Amara stopped laughing and glared at me. That's right, she let it grow that long to show off. She was trying to get to me because I have bad hair, right? I cut it off because she was provoking me. Amara snorted as if what she had done was normal. That's nonsense. Is that why you chopped off my hair? That sounds stupid. I was just letting it grow because my boyfriend said he liked it. I don't have time to provoke you. Amara's face suddenly turned red at Thalia's words. All men like straight hair. The girl my husband cheated with also had long straight hair like you. That's why I was angry. You wouldn't understand how I feel about having curly hair. In that case, how do you know how I feel about being shaved? If you're angry, it's okay to cut someone's hair, right, Mom? I asked as I took the clippers out of my bag. Amara's face suddenly changed as Thalia grabbed Amara's curly hair and turned on the clippers. Amara yelled no and held her hair back, then threw her body down on the floor and started crying. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I was so frustrated. I was miserable because I got divorced. That's why I couldn't allow Thalia to be happy. I'm so sorry. Amara rubbed her head on the floor and began begging while lying face down beside her. My husband also knelt. I'm sorry. I've always felt guilty about Amara. Back then, I hit her without even listening to her. So this time, I decided to take Amara's side. I understand how her husband feels about her guilt, but this isn't a matter of taking sides. However, before I could say anything, her mother-in-law spoke from the side. Thalia isn't part of our family, so we can't help it. Patricia is Orson's wife, but Thalia is someone else's child, right? I still haven't forgiven her for hurting Amara when she was in junior high school. While Amara was staying with my in-laws, my mother-in-law probably listened to Amara's words and sympathized with her. That's why she was taking revenge by treating me harshly too. Yes, we both regret what happened, but Amara wasn't the only one who was hurt. Thalia was hurt too when her hair was cut. But you only blame Amara. You didn't feel sorry for Amara. We regretted that too. But at that time, Amara was in middle school and Thalia was only six years old. Even if they had been sisters by blood, I would have still scolded Amara. My mother-in-law fell silent. The difference in power between Amara and Thalia at that time was obvious again. What Amara and my husband did was clearly over the top. My mother-in-law must have known that too. When my mother-in-law became quiet, my husband began speaking in a trembling voice. It was hard on me to watch Frances grow up looking just like her father in the photo. I was jealous of Frances' father. I wasn't that good looking. My hair was shaggy and I wore glasses. I was anxious that you might start thinking about him through Frances. When I came here and started living together, I realized what my mother-in-law was instilling in my husband. My mother-in-law played on my husband's feelings of inferiority and guilt and tried to isolate Thalia. I never once thought of replacing you with that person. I loved your cute shaggy curls. Hey, what happened to love me with every memory of that person? Wasn't that what you promised? My husband looked at me in shock, then looked down with tears streaming down his face. It seemed to both my husband and Amara that there was pitch black darkness spreading beyond the curly hair in the silent room. I held out a piece of paper to my husband. I want a divorce. My husband opened his eyes wide in surprise. That can't be true. I'm sorry, I finally see what's wrong. I still want to attend France's wedding as her father. I can't. I've already told her fiancé about this. When he saw France's head, he didn't want you to go to the wedding. Thalia took my arm. She looked like she wanted to go home. Thalia and I stood up, and my mother-in-law hurriedly stood up. 
Wait a minute, what about the house? This place is old and I can't live in it anymore. Strangely, you sold the house without consulting Orson. My heart was about to calm down, but I felt waves rising again. I asked in a low voice, looking into my mother-in-law's eyes. That house was left to me by France's father and is in my name. You wouldn't want to live in a house built by someone else, right? My mother-in-law's lips trembled, and she sat down without saying a word. After checking out the expression on my mother-in-law's face, Thalia and I started walking. Finally, Thalia turned and called out to my husband and Amara. I'm not going to let this slide. Wait, what do you mean by that? I called the police that day. I talked to them. Yes, that day we called the police. The police officer who came to the house told us that since the crime was committed within the family, we should discuss it carefully before deciding whether to report the crime. I've been thinking about it, but I'm going to file a police report about Amara and her father. Thalia announced in a cold voice, looking down at my husband and Amara. Wait a minute, hey, please just don't get the police into this, Thalia, please forgive me, please, we're family. We've been living together for 20 years. You're supposed to be married soon. You too will become the daughter of a criminal. My already turbulent heart trembled with anger. I don't understand why my husband brings up the word family here. Don't be silly, even though we've been together for 20 years. You get jealous and make Thalia feel scared. You're the ones who destroyed our family. You're turning Francis into the daughter of a criminal. Perhaps because he had never seen me so angry. My husband froze with his mouth open and was trembling slightly. If you really care about us, shut up and divorce me now. Can you live without me? My husband looked at me with tearful eyes, as if this was his last hope. It's like an abandoned puppy. I straightened my back and looked at my husband. It's okay. We'll make sure that the assets are divided properly, and that we have the insurance money left by France's father. We'll be able to sell the house. We'll manage somehow. The three of them can't say anything anymore. I left the moldy smell of my in-law's house and breathed in the fresh air outside. Thalia and I looked at each other and walked out together with relieved faces. Afterward, Thalia and I went to the police station to file a report. My husband and Amara were summarily charged and sentenced to fines. Even if they don't go to jail, they will still have a criminal record. It appears that my husband was fired from his longtime job before reaching retirement age due to his criminal record. Their in-law's house needs renovation, and their lives will be difficult from now on. After my divorce was finalized, Thalia and I moved into a relatively cheap 2DK apartment. Thalia will be getting married in six months as planned. My husband contacted Francis and wanted to pay for her wedding as compensation, but we both know they don't have the money to pay, especially not after their fine. We didn't want to do something uncomfortable like having her wedding performed on my husband's debt, so she flatly declined. After a while, I received a letter from Amara apologizing. She finally realized that it was her obsession with her straight hair that had been tormenting her for so many years. The letter said, even though she knew Thalia was not to blame, she was jealous. She said, as Amara's mother, I was heartbroken to think that she compared herself so much, causing so much pain. From now on, I sincerely hope that Amara can let go of her attachments and learn to love herself. Thalia has since dyed her short hair a bright color. Her hair color, which is reminiscent of milk tea, matches her fair skin. Maybe being a bride with short hair isn't so bad. Yes, no matter what hairstyle you have, you are still you. Once we get married and Thalia moves out, I plan to move out of the apartment and move back to my parents' house. Once I have finished my role as her mother, I plan to take care of my parents and repay them for raising me. No matter what happens, I'm sure it'll be okay. Yeah, it'll work out, right? We looked at each other and laughed. Right now, I want to cherish the little time I have left as a parent. WTH Thalia. Let's finally get started on this new chapter of our lives together. Embracing the future with hope and resilience. As we stand here stronger than ever, we know that no matter what challenges lie ahead, we will face them together. With Thalia by my side, I feel empowered to tackle whatever comes our way. Our journey may have been tumultuous, but it has brought us to this moment of clarity and strength. Together we'll continue to navigate life's twists and turns, cherishing each other and the precious moments we share. As we move forward, let's remember that love and perseverance conquer all. With a smile on our faces and determination in our hearts, let's step boldly into the unknown, ready to embrace whatever lies ahead. Thanks for watching. How did you find the story? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more awesome stories like this.
Your feedback and support mean a lot.